Are the folks running the audio, the video and audio ready for us? You, can I call us to order? All right, I will call us to order. Thank you guys. As I said earlier, I think our audio visual setup today has been excellent. So thank you all for that. I'll call to order the Board of Trustees meeting and I'll ask the Secretary, Mr. Ray, to call the roll. We do have three people attending virtually today. So when I call your name, uh, if you will answer yes to these questions, can you simultaneously hear and speak to the board members? Is there anyone in the room with you? And then let us know that you received the board materials. So I think Trustee Alcott's not joined yet, but we'll go ahead and start the roll call and catch up with him. Okay, Trustee Alcott is on now. So again, answer yes to those questions when I get to your name. Trustee Alcott. Okay, maybe he's not quite with us yet. Trustee Jones. Yes, I'm here. I am alone and I received all the materials. Trustee Lowry. Uh, yes, I'm here and I am alone and I have received all the materials. Okay, Trustee Alcott. Yes, I'm alone and I've received the materials. Trustee Lynn. I'm here. <laughs> Trustee Rose. Here. Trustee Stites. Here. Trustee Van Hooser. Here. Trustee Willis. Here. Trustee Wilmore. Here. Trustee Harper. Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum and everyone is present. Excellent, and thanks to those of you who are joining from wherever you're joining from, but I also uh, very much appreciate those of you who are here in person. We have, um, as we generally do, we, we're gonna start with a uh, recognition of a student, a very special student, Braden Copeland. And Braden, if you wanna go ahead and be making your way up to the podium, um, I'm going to introduce Braden, recently won the prestigious and highly competitive Goldwater Scholarship. He is only the third Tech student ever to receive this scholarship and the first since 1999. Braden is a sophomore studying both chemistry and biology and he will receive up to $7,500 for up to two years. The Goldwater Scholarship program is designed to foster and encourage outstanding students to pursue research careers, and it is the preeminent undergraduate award of its type in these fields. Braden is a sophomore from Rickman. He's pursuing degrees in chemistry and biology with a minor in honors. He is conducting research in the chemistry department with Dr. Andrea Kojukaru. Did I get close? Close enough? Will you come on up too and join him, please? Uh, Dr. Kojikaru felt that um, Braden was the right person to nominate for the Goldwater Scholarship because of his dedication, level of discipline, and intellectual ability. Now, would you mind saying your name so I can say it properly? Andrea Kojikaru. Kojikaru, almost. Okay, no, I still didn't get it. Okay. We're very glad you're both here, and Braden, congratulations. Uh, can you say a few words about what you liked about Tech? You're a sophomore. Did you just finish your sophomore year or are you about to start your sophomore year? I just finished my sophomore year. So tell us about you. Okay. Um, so the Goldwater Scholarship emphasizes undergraduate students involved in research. And I would say my lifelong passion for medicine and science led me here. I've wanted to become a physician from a very young age, and when selecting a university, I knew I wanted to attend a place where I could gain the research experience that's critical to becoming a well-rounded physician scientist. And I read that Tech's chemistry department involves more students in undergraduate research than most schools in the southeastern US and has a great track record of sending students to academic conferences and providing opportunities for publication. Um, I was also attracted to their goal of involving students in research early on. And once I arrived at Tech, I knew I wanted to pursue pharmaceutical research that would provide skills useful once I become a clinician. And I can say since joining Dr. Kojikaro's research group my freshman year, 
I've worked on transforming solid state drugs into the liquid state. Um, I've worked with pharmaceuticals that have antiviral, anticonvalescent, anti-epileptic, and anti-psychotic properties and investigated their chemical transformations. Um, so to tell you a little bit about our research, I'm sure you were wondering why would you even bother transforming a solid drug into a liquid one. Well, today most pharmaceuticals exist as solid state drugs with an organic ion and an FDA approved counter ion. Uh, these solid state drugs exhibit significant drawbacks. Uh, they have a short shelf life, low stability, and low bioavailability because they transform between different crystalline structures. So we work to transform them into the liquid state, which alleviates each of these issues and also allows us to investigate new pathways for delivery for different medications. Uh, my research has been presented at numerous conferences, both regional and national, and I'm also a co-author on a paper that was recently published in one of the American Chemical Society's journals. Um, I've been awarded student research grant funding and a creative inquiry student research grant funding. Um, the Goldwater is highly competitive with an estimated pool of 5,000 applicants beginning the lengthy process and approximately 415 final awardees. Um, it involves a research paper and lengthy descriptions of all of your academic coursework and your research work in the lab. Uh, this success would not have been possible without the opportunities Tech provided me starting out my freshman year. But I would also like to thank someone very special, Dr. Kojikaro. Um, I could not ask for a better mentor or professor in the lab, and I believe she is one of the department's greatest assets because, <coughs> sorry, uh, she demonstrates unbelievable devotion to us, her research students, her students in the classroom, and she's taught me more than anyone in the lab and the classroom that I can say, and this would not have been possible without her. So I'm going to let her say a few words. How can I follow that? <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess it's my turn to brag on Braden. <laughs> Uh, so I'm an instructor in the chemistry department where I teach uh, organic chemistry at both undergraduate and graduate level. And um, in my six years of teaching at Tech, I was also able to develop a research program involving undergraduate students and graduate students. And my bragging about Braden is that from the last, I think, over 20 students that I mentored at Tech, Braden is the only the second student that joined my group as a freshman. And because of the type of material I, uh, I cover in classes, because of the type of research I do, I need my students to have some knowledge about organic structures, about how to characterize those compounds, how to synthesize them, how to handle them. So I'm kind of um, cautious when it's about having a freshman uh, joining my group. However, he was highly recommended by his academic advisor, uh, Dr. Amanda Carroll, and I decided to give him a shot and see what's happening. And um, I think within a couple of months of him joining my group, I saw that he has the qualities needed for him to succeed. And I'm going to have to read this because I'm not going to memorize what Goldwater Scholarship states. Uh, so this scholarship is given to college sophomores and juniors who show exceptional promise of becoming this nation's next generation of research leaders. And again, within a couple of weeks of him starting to work in my group, I saw the qualities that he has, and I thought that he is a perfect candidate for that award. And just to give you an exa a few examples of his progress in lab, so he started as a freshman. His first task was to write a research proposal. We all know how easy it is to write a research proposal. He did a wonderful job at writing that proposal. He conducted the research. He became very comfortable in a laboratory setting. He was able to do independent work. Um, during his uh, sophomore year, he took over a second project where he continued, he continued the work of my graduate student which I think, again, it's an amazing uh, 
accomplishment from, from his part. And those results were actually part of the publication uh, Braden was mentioning. So right now he's a co-author on his first publication that was um, published on the American Chemical Society, in one of the American Chemical Society journals in, um, I think it was April or something like that. Um, he kept writing grants. He received two more research grants. He's continuing his work. Um, I'm hoping that everything that Braden accomplished with this Goldwater Scholarship um, will actually motivate and inspire our other students because this only confirmed that we as research group, as chemistry department, as a university, we, we are able to provide these kids um, nationally recognized experiences. And I'm hoping that, again, um, will just motivate those kids to be involved more and more in research. So I have only great words to say about this kid. He's my kid, like my kids are from home. But I think I couldn't find a better candidate for, for this um, scholarship. You are both very <laughs> great uh, uh, representatives of this university. It's, we it's hope so. Hard for me to imagine someone as committed as you and uh, Dr. Kojikaro and then uh, Braden to see what you're doing. We, we can't wait to call you Dr. <laughs> Dr. Braden Copeland. And uh, we look forward to seeing more great things from you. And, and you know, you've got a chemist sitting right over I know. here. You know, he, his he, wife said one time I made a comment about being the wife of a, prof of a <laughs> university president. She said, I'm the wife of a chemist. <laughs> you, you know, actually, he taught, when he taught, at Quan Chem, like two years ago, uh, in the classroom that was next door to my office in that wonderful building, Foster Hall. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you both. Congratulations yeah. again, Brighton, and join me in congratulating yeah. Brighton. Thank please. you. <laughs>
Thank you so much. I just have one correction to what you said. Thanks to uh, Barry Rilmore, we're not just nationally known, we are universally known. He did take one of our tuba recordings up in space with him. And if you would like to go up to the third floor to the tuba collection up there, there's a really nice photograph that he, that he made with the, tu with the tuba recording floating in space in his cockpit up there. So, uh, you know, it, uh, I could take uh, a long time thanking everyone uh, for 55 wonderful years at Tennessee Tech. Uh, but I just thought I would take um, each year and tell you a wonderful story about each of those 55 years. So if you've got about 30 minutes or so, uh, I told my wife I was coming here because President Oldham was going to pin me with my 55-year pin. I don't have it yet, Phil. Where's my pen? <laughs> oh, it's up there. At any rate, folks, I can't tell you. We've got it, and you don't get it until you finish your 55 stories. There you go. <laughs> well, I won't tell 55 stories. I'll just simply say how much uh, from walking in the door, interviewing with Everett Derryberry, in July, it was July 1967, and I've got a real story to tell about that, but I won't tell it today, okay? Um, up till walking out of the door with uh, the wonderful support from President Oldham and all of the, the administration for all 55 of those years, I mean, the lowly, lowly tuba. Now think about it, there's nothing lower than the tuba because it's the lowest instrument in the orchestra and in the band and everything else. To try and have that instrument recognized with some significance means that everything above that is even more significant. And in all honesty, that was one of my thoughts all those years trying to build the tuba program because I thought if I took the tuba program out nationally and everywhere, that people would say, wow, look at the tubas. If the tubas are that good, how good are the trombones and French horns and the clarinets and the trumpets and the drums and everything? And uh, that would help to establish the reputation of the School of Music at Tennessee Tech University, uh, which it has become nationally recognized uh, as a wonderful School of Music as part of a fantastic university. I just want to thank all of you that have been involved with the administration and with the university for 55 phenomenal years. Thank you so much. Professor Morris, would you come forward? I'm sorry, I should have asked you to do that. Come around this way, if you would. I'm going to report one more thing about Mr. Morris. He said, I said, now you retire, you get to do what you want to do. He said, that's what I've been doing the last 55 years. So I hope we can all live our lives like that. But Thank Cha you. Chairman, I'd just like Please. to reiterate. So when Winston started here in 1967, the university was only 52 years old, and he's been here for 55. So, so if you want to know some history of Tennessee Tech, Winston's probably the person to talk to. Well, thank you so much. Chair Harper, if I might say a word. Yes, please, Mr. Alcott. I want to add that um, Winston is, has been and continues to be an inspiration to his colleagues at an incredibly high level, especially those of us who were junior colleagues or started with here, um, that we all thought if we just do 10% of what Winston does, we'll be successful. 
And um, so I thank him for that. Winston and I are, I always tease him. He and I both went to Indiana University, only I wasn't alive yet when he was there. Well, we thank you for that. And it has been a pleasure to have a music professor on our board for the last year and a half or so. So we hope that, he, that Professor Alcott continues the great tradition. Professor Morris, thank you so much for everything you've done for all of us and for all of our students. One more round of applause. And I have another recognition to make. We have a former board member who served out his first term with us and then um, decided he couldn't give us the kind of time that we needed. So he selfishly, selflessly, excuse me, selflessly uh, gave up his seat on the Tennessee Tech Board of Trustees. But Perna Sigurdi has recently been appointed to be the vice chair of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch in New York. He's the second ranking official for Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. It's sort of mind boggling to me, uh, but, but Perna is, those of us who got to work with Perna know he was all of that, plus he was just one of the most great, he is one of the most gracious human beings I've ever met. And so we have a resolution, I believe President Oldham, you have that resolution. If you don't mind, you're gonna to go to the front. I don't think Perna's gonna join us by video, but we're gonna send Perna a resolution that we would like to um, adopt as a board, if you all agree. So this is a recognition resolution by the Board of Trustees for Perna Segurti, June 23rd, 2022. Actually, it's a misprint here. Um, a resolution to recognize Perna Segurti, an alumnus of Tennessee Technological University and inaugural member of the Tennessee Tech Board of Trustees for his appointment as Vice Chair of the Bank of America. Whereas Mr. Segurdy has served as an excellent ambassador for Tennessee Tech University through his bold, fearless, confident, and kind demeanor as he leads in the world of global finance. Whereas Mr. Segurdy holds a Master of Science degree in Chemical Engineering from Tennessee Technological University, graduating in 1982. And whereas through his career, Mr. Segurdy has advised clients around the globe and has worked on landmark transactions for a number of clients, including Dow, DuPont, Ecolab, Engelhard, GE, Huntsman, Lyondell, Basel, Merck, Potash Corporation, Reliance, and Tatas. And whereas Mr. Sigurdi is currently a member of the executive board of the U.S.-India Strategic Partnership Forum and the board of trustees of the Smithsonian National Museum of Asian Art, and whereas Mr. Segurdy was appointed by Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam to the inaugural Tennessee Technological University Board of Trustees in 2016, serving through 2021, and whereas among many other acts of service, Mr. Segurdy also served as a member of the Graduate Executive Board of the Wharton School and the former chairman of the Board of Trustees of the John Whitehead School of Diplomacy and International Relations, and whereas Mr. Segurdy also was co-chairman of the Finance Committee of the Sustainable Energy for All Initiative of the World Bank and the United Nations, and whereas Mr. Segurdy previously served as the co-head of Global Corporate and Investment Banking and vice chairman of the Global Diversity and Inclusion Council for Bank of America, and whereas Mr. Segurdy was named vice chairman of Bank of America and chairman of Global Corporate and investment banking in 2021, be it resolved by Tennessee Technological University Board of Trustee, Trustees that in light of this information and in appreciation for all his service and accomplishments, we honor Vice Chairman Perna Segurti this 23rd day of June, 2022. Thank you, President Oldham. Would someone care to make a motion to adopt that resolution? I so move. Thank you, Mr. Stites. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you, Ms. Van Hooser. The motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? I, I just have to say he's one of ours. Isn't that amazing? All right. Hearing none, I will ask for a roll call vote. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. 
Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Seitz. Aye. Trustee Van Heuser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. And Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. That motion passes, and so that resolution is approved, and I think that uh, Perna will be very honored by that. Uh, next, we will take up the minutes of our last meeting, our March 10th meeting. Those are in your board books. I would entertain a motion regarding the minutes. I move we accept the minutes as read. Thank as you. Written. I'm sorry, who was that, Fred? Tom Jones. Oh, Tom, thank you. I can't see you all right now. So the motion's been made by Tom. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Van Hooser. Is there any discussion about the minutes? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Seitz. Aye. Trustee Van Hooser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. And then I just have a comment before we get started with the rest of our business. I would like to make a comment about a uh, uh, about our tuition for the upcoming year, and I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of where we are with uh, with tuition and our position on this. So I just want to take a minute to acknowledge an important decision that will benefit Tech students and families this upcoming year. Tennessee Tech will have a zero increase in tuition and fees next year for all students. As a board, we are delighted to have the support of the Tennessee Legislature and Governor Lee, who understood meeting the needs of students. A zero tuition increase helps students and families keep their budgets in check. At the same time, the state understood the funding required to maintain and improve Tech's ability to serve students, and it provided generous support for our efforts. We are, we are so glad to be able to say today there is no tuition increase this year. So uh, thanks to the board members for supporting that, and uh, the, that was enabled by the state legislature and the governor. And uh, now I believe we'll have the president's report, President Oldham. Yes, Madam Chair and, and uh, Board of Trustees, uh, good afternoon and thank you as always for the honor of serving you and serving this great institution. So this uh, marks somewhat of an anniversary for uh, the Oldham family. Uh, actually, it's 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago this month, actually, the Oldham family was moving into Walton House. Uh, I, I started to wear that suit today just to prove that I could still wear it. Uh, but I decided not to. Um, and just to really, at that time, to start this new and exciting journey here at Tennessee Tech, now 10 short years later, I'm even more excited. I'm happy to say I'm even more excited than I was then, uh, partly because of the progress that we've been able to realize over these last few years. Uh, but even more, I think, because of the potential that still exists and remains here at Tennessee Tech, yet to be realized, and, and that's an exciting thing to be a part of, and I thank you for that opportunity. Certainly over the last five years, uh, this new experiment with the Board of Trustees has been a big part, a very important partner in that progress, and I thank you and uh, welcome the fact that you continue to challenge us to be even bigger and bolder in our vision for tech than we would have been normally. So thank you for that, and thank you for being a tremendous part of this uh, journey. So throughout the 107-year history now of Tennessee Tech, uh, of which Winston Morris has been half of it, interestingly, um, the key, I believe, to the success of Tennessee Tech is, is really summed up in one word, and that's relevance. Tennessee Tech has been relevant, and it's important for us to continue to be relevant to all those that we serve. Uh, but importantly, relevance is not something that is achieved once forevermore. It's actually something that has to be earned and reinvented practically every day. Uh, and we realize that, and we take that very seriously. 
we also realize that we can measure relevance in a lot of different ways, and we do that. We have a lot of discussions during our board meetings and, and in between on how to measure that relevance and what it means. And certainly, first and foremost, we must be relevant in the content and quality of the academic programs that we offer, that we deliver, that's driven by the expertise and passion of our faculty. Uh, you've seen evidence of that clearly today in just the last few moments. Uh, we speak about those things frequently uh, because they are central. That's obviously our mission. That's the core of our mission. Uh, and so not to slight that in any way, but today for my report, I'd like to draw our attention and remind us of some of those other aspects of relevance that may get less attention but are nonetheless very impactful in terms of our mission as an institution, as a university. So one of which that we talk about occasionally now, we're, 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 we love to talk about how well ranked we are, but it's, this is for a purpose. Uh, we, are, we continue to be the number one public university in Tennessee as ranked in best colleges by Money Magazine. And again, this is about the value proposition, and that's why this one honestly means so much to me, because the value proposition for students is that it's, a, it's an affordable education that, that provides great benefits, okay? So I think students that come to Tennessee Tech enjoy great success because of that value proposition, largely. Now, quite honestly, we get great students. Okay, they come to us as really good people. Uh, and sometimes I joke to say that our job is, is uh, just not to mess them up. Uh, and I, I say that jokingly, but, but there's truth to that. They are good when they come to us, and our job is to, is to make them that much better and to add value to their opportunities and to their career options. And I'm really excited about this, and I think that's, that's playing out in a lot of ways. You've heard already earlier this morning about uh, we're anticipating a, uh, uh, a near record freshman class this fall, uh, somewhere in the 2000 range of number of students, uh, while at the same time it's a more diverse freshman class than probably ever at Tennessee Tech, and academically as strong as any freshman class we've ever had. So the, the academic quality is outstanding, but we're attracting more and more students I think largely because of this, because it's a great value and it pays great dividends, and that's being understood. I also want to talk a little bit about a legacy of relevance. Uh, you know, on the, on the screen now, there's six individuals that we've unfortunately recently lost uh, that have played a major role in this institution, and more importantly, played a major role to the larger community uh, and world that we live in. And, and I won't go into it a lot of detail about each one of these, uh, but I'll, I will mention them. Uh, they're certainly part of the history of Tennessee Tech and the legacy, uh, but they all, in their own unique way, demonstrate what it means to be part of this Tennessee Tech family, and that's they were bold, fearless, confident, and kind. So recent, in recent months, we've lost Michael Birdie Birdwell, longtime history professor at Tennessee Tech and a, and a great friend, colleague, and scholar, a uh, tremendous historical scholar. Millard Oakley, who uh, most all of you knew well as a great philanthropist and a visionary leader for the Upper Cumberland, uh, early member of the Tennessee legislature years ago. Uh, Dr. Angelo Volpe, uh, President Emeritus of Tennessee Tech and left a great legacy of his 12 years as President of Tech that still lives on today. Les Winningham uh, just passed away in the last few days. Uh, uh, Les Tennessee Tech graduate, a uh, longtime member of the Tennessee General Assembly uh, and great supporter of Tennessee Tech. And then two uh, former uh, students, ROTC members, uh, Later on, generals, uh, Carl Steiner, uh, four-star, retired four-star Army general, uh, and uh, Lieutenant General uh, Don uh, Rogers, who also recently passed away. 
all of these individuals have left a significant mark, and they were all very proud alums or, in Angelo's case, former president of Tennessee Tech, and they made sure everybody knew about that. Uh, and, and so our, uh, I often say that uh, higher education is a unique business because the, the customer is also our product. Uh, these, these were all students, mostly students, and later became products, and they went on to, to demonstrate what uh, a Tennessee Tech education and, and value system can do for the broader community. So it's, uh, it's part of relevance that we might not recognize uh, so clearly sometimes, but I wanted to indicate that and, and to talk then a little bit about how that lives on. So we've got, we've got two former generals. Um, the ROTC program here at Tennessee Tech goes back to 1950. So we've had a long-standing tradition in uh, Army ROTC. Uh, we've had at least 12 uh, alums of the ROTC program here rise to the level of general uh, in the Army, or admiral in one case uh, in the Navy. Um, and uh, my understanding is it was, the, it was only the second ROTC program established in the state of Tennessee. It was mandatory for all male students from 1956 until 1967. Uh, and I, I believe in 1967 there were something in the vicinity of 2,000 cadets on this campus at that time. So a very sizable uh, battalion. So it's, it's a great tradition, it lives on. We continue to graduate uh, and commission second lieutenants. Uh, we had a, a, a relatively large class this past year and if you, if you have a chance, if any of you have a chance to come to one of our commissioning ceremonies uh, each fall or spring, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, if, uh, if you need something to make you feel good about the future, I think that would help you get there. Uh, it's a, it's a great uh, aspect of this university. Very proud of the fact that we continue that tradition uh, and uh, it's something we feel very strongly about. So uh, it's, a, it's a part of relevance that uh, we might not think about too much. Athletics, we've already talked about a little bit earlier today. Uh, we are celebrating the centennial year this year for varsity athletics at Tennessee Tech. Uh, officially started, I think, in 1922. Uh, and so uh, this fall, the football team will be celebrating its centennial year. Uh, and uh, a lot to be proud of. It's, a very, it's an integral part and has been an integral part of the university experience for students here for 100 years. Interestingly, the most successful team, uh, the most successful sport we've had at Tennessee Tech in terms of championships uh, is one that we don't compete in anymore. It's rifle. Uh, we, Tennessee Tech won six national titles in rifle prior to it being an NCAA sport and then won the first three NCAA national titles in rifle in 1980, 81, and 82. So a highly successful program. It was discontinued uh, a number of years ago. Uh, but. Uh, we have won national titles in some sports. It happens to be rifle. Second most successful team, uh, our program has been women's basketball, and we're celebrating, as you heard earlier, 50 years of Title IX uh, and women's sports in, in uh, college athletics. So in women's basketball, we own 18 conference championships, 10 NCAA tournament appearances, uh, Tech has the 21st winningest women's basketball program in the country. Oh, it sounds pretty good. Um, and it has been a, a leader in the development of women's sports uh, in the aftermath of Title IX and individuals such as Marinell Matters and Bill Worrell, who have been mentioned earlier, are a huge part of that. I'm very proud to be representing uh, not only Tennessee Tech, but the Ohio Valley Conference <clears throat> in the last few years on the NCAA Board of Governors and the uh, Division I Board of Directors. Uh, it's certainly an opportunity for our voice to be heard in the national picture of athletics. And uh, as you know, there's a lot going on right now 
uh, at the NCAA level and very proud to be part of that. Uh, my, my role on the Board of Governors will, uh, will end uh, later this summer, actually next month, uh, but my role on the D1 board will continue through next year, so I still have a little bit more left on that. And the last area I'll highlight today is, is the local impact, local relevance uh, of the university. So we talk a lot about Cookville being Tennessee's college town, and we actually have it trademarked now. Uh, so we're officially, uh, Cookville is Tennessee's college town. Uh, and there's a lot here to be proud of. Uh, and there's a lot more opportunity, I would say, that we can add to this to both help the university and the, and the broader community of Cookville and Putnam County and the Upper Cumberland. Historically, you go back to the founding of the institution. You know, Tennessee Tech really exists because of the citizens of Cookville who fought very hard to have an institution of higher education in their community, in this community. So the history dates back to 1909. Uh, the economic impact of Tennessee Tech is extensive. Uh, some $860 million of annual economic impact on Cookville and the Upper Cumberland. Uh, so we are a major driver in the local economy. We, we uh, have created some uh, 7,000 jobs for this part of Tennessee. Statewide, we have over $1.5 billion economic impact for the entire state of Tennessee, creating almost 12,000 jobs across the state. But the future success of Tennessee Tech and all that really depends on the success, also on the success of Cookville and Putnam County and the Upper Cumberland. I'm happy to say that I've been uh, chosen, asked to serve as chairman-elect of the Cookville-Putnam County Chamber of Commerce this year, which means I'll serve as the uh, chairman uh, next year for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I've served on the board for the Chamber uh, uh, for a number of years, and I, I find it very important to try to pull these pieces together so that the, the campus and the community at large can uh, effectively leverage against each other to the benefit of everyone. Uh, we're very fortunate that we, we, we reside in a community that is uh, a great one to be part of. Uh, it's a, great partnerships, uh, great individuals. Uh, we work together extremely well. Uh, and quite honestly, when there's uh, uh, an opportunity or an issue, uh, it's not a matter of whether or not it's going to get uh, addressed or solved. It's a matter of, okay, how do we go about doing it and getting the right people in the room? And, and so it's, it's really a joy to be part of that kind of team. Uh, and uh, to be part of that kind of community. So a, a few quick things that sort of indicate that. Of course, we were partnered with uh, the, the Chamber of Commerce and the local community for uh, a dozen years in hosting the, the Blue Cross Blue Shield Bowl for Tennessee, the, the high school football championships here at Tennessee Tech, uh, which recently were relocated to another location. Uh, we have hopes, uh, certainly with the new football stadium project, to eventually attract that back. Uh, that was a great asset to the community as well as to the campus, uh, and we look forward to seeing that back on this campus again sometime in the future. Uh, but some other things that we're working on now is uh, welcome signs. Uh, hopefully within the next several months, uh, a partnership between the city of Cookville and Tennessee Tech, uh, we're going to go in together in, in uh, putting up some welcome signs uh, to the community. So when you get off of the interstate at Willow Avenue or Jefferson Avenue, you will immediately be met with a, with a very large stately sign that says something to the effect, welcome to Cookville, Tennessee, home of Tennessee Tech University. Uh, we look forward to making that happen and we, we are very excited about the partnership with the city of Cookville to, to make that so. City of Cookville is also helping us with the, the football stadium project. They've made a major ongoing financial commitment uh, to help us with that uh, project. Uh, obviously, they see the benefit to them uh, in helping attract more visitors and more uh, economic activity to the community. And so, again, this is another way that we can help each other. Uh, and 
Uh, the last one I'll highlight is something that we kicked off a year or so ago, uh, really leveraging off of Tennessee's College Town and trying to get more of our students to uh, hang around on weekends and enjoy the, the local opportunities, activities, and that's uh, a series of, of College Town weekends. Uh, that's a partnership with uh, the community to organize activities around uh, things that would be of interest to college students and uh, help uh, keep them here on weekends and enjoy the local opportunities. So there's a lot of ways that we can measure relevance. There's a lot of ways that universities, universities like Tennessee Tech make a difference in very practical ways. Uh, so what's the challenge of the future? The challenge of the future is to continue to be relevant, continue to look for those opportunities and continue to reinvent ourselves in ways that, that people realize are making a difference, a positive difference in their lives. So we've got to be agile and innovative, which I believe we are, but we can always do better. Uh, we need to recognize and reward innovation and excellence, which we've done a lot of that here today, recognition of that level of excellence uh, and innovation that goes on on campus. Uh, and I'm happy to announce that one aspect of that is to increase the promotion increments, salary raises for faculty as they're promoted from one rank to another to help not only recognize them in word, but give them something tangible. Uh, in their pocketbook to say, hey, we appreciate what you've done, what you've accomplished, and we want you to continue to, to fill out your career here at Tennessee Tech. Obviously, we've got to continue to listen to our communities, hear what they have to say, what, learn what they have to tell us uh, about what's relevant to them, continue to outreach to our region and state, and learning from the strength of our past, teaching our students to be relevant to their world, like those wonderful alums that I showed you earlier, to make a difference, to live their lives as they have, bold, fearless, confident, and kind. So I want, you know, at the 10-year mark, uh, for at least my time here at Tennessee Tech, I want to pause and just hopefully all of us can celebrate our identity as, a, as Tennessee Tech University, as the number one public university in Tennessee, be proud of what we do, and look forward to the opportunities that we have before us. So um, thank you for letting me make this report, drawing our attention to some things that we may not think about as often, uh, but I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Are there any questions for the President? Excellent report. Good reminder of all of the great people that have been part of our university, including a couple that we recognize today and several around this table and the ones you highlighted and then probably thousands more. But thank you, President Oldham. Any other comments or questions? All right, thank you very much. Our next order of business is the election of the student trustee. And I need to um, just remind everyone it was in our it was in our um, board books that the, that the Student Government Association has changed their, I'm going to say procedure. It's a little stronger than that. I think they had a, they had a policy or something. I'm not sure what they called it. Anyway, they had a, they had a history of um, not allowing an executive officer of the Student Government Association to serve as the student trustee to the Board of Trustees. So they decided this past year that that didn't make a lot of sense, that they would eliminate that requirement. And so they did eliminate that requirement. They've also agreed to select a student to, uh, to be submitted to us for approval instead of three students from whom we would choose um, I think we've had a Sophie's Choice a couple of times with some tough decisions to make. And so I think that's going to be a, a good outcome. And so this year we have a nominee. And I'm going to ask Savannah if you'll just come up to the front and let me be introducing her as she's moving forward. The Student Government Association has submitted Savannah Griffin as their nominee for the fiscal year 23 student member of the Tennessee Tech Board of Trustees. Um, excuse me, Hannah, I'm sorry, I had the wrong thing. 
Uh, Savannah is a senior secondary education major, and I don't know where you're from. I'm sorry, where are you from? Seymour, Tennessee. Seymour, Tennessee, awesome. She's the outgoing SGA executive treasurer and the incoming SGA secretary. So that was why she's an executive officer, so that's why this, was, this resolution was important that we needed to be able to um, allow her to serve. She has served as a student orientation assistant, the student success coordinator for Flight Path, an RA for the residence halls, and is the student member of the board of directors of the Tennessee Tech Parent Association. Now here's where I get into trouble. I, had a, I, I ran into Trustee Van Hooser yesterday in the hotel as we were both checking in, and I said, the only problem with this new student trustee is she's a member of Alpha Delta Pi sorority. <laughs> We were members of other sororities. We won't tell you which ones. But anyway, we're, we're pleased to have a Greek. In, in her application, Savannah writes, I am driven by my passion to serve my peers. So will you tell us about your passion for serving your, stu your fellow students and your university as a student trustee? Yes, of course. Thank you, Chair Harper. And good afternoon, Board of Trustees members and President Oldham. I wanted to start off by uh, thanking you all for your hard work and dedication throughout your terms in serving this university as a whole, its faculty, its staff, and its students. Adhering to such a large group of people can be challenging, I am sure, and I've been able to witness this firsthand in my leadership across our campus. I've always had a passion to serve my peers, whether that was in student council in elementary school or serving on my school board in high school. And so when I came to Tech my freshman year, I knew I had to jump head first, and so I did. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with the New Student Family Programs Office for two years now. I'm a two-year student orientation assistant, which means not only do I get to show off how wonderful our campus is to new incoming students, but I get to help acclimate them um, to our campus and different resources that they are going to use to be successful here on campus. But my connection with those students does not end after their orientation session, and nor, oh, you guys are flashing, <laughs> and nor does it, um, and after their first semester. Um, I am advocating and helping and cheering on these students until they cross the commencement stage in May of 2025 and May of 2026, which is kind of crazy to think about. Additionally, I serve as a student success coordinator in our Flight Path program, which is a program that ensures that first-year students are attending their classes regularly and are connected to the resources they have available at their fingertips. So I, if I see that a student is missing class, I call them up and I ask what's going on, I figure out uh, the big idea, and I connect them to departments and resources that fit their unique academic and personal conflicts. Additionally, I had the opportunity to be a resident assistant in our MS Cooper Pinkerton Halls. Being an RA was a learning curve and a challenge for sure, but I'm so glad I did it. I worked daily with residential life faculty and staff on programs and uh, resource education to ensure that every residential student was having an impactful experience and would leave res life wanting to never, um, you know, never forget that experience. A few of my other roles include being a Greek Life member on campus. I serve as the B VP of Programming and Risk Management for our Panhellenic Executive Team, which kind of means I just help oversee all five Panhellenic sororities on our campus. And I also get the opportunity to serve on the Tennessee Tech Parent Association Board of Trustees as a student member. And though I do serve in many roles and have served, because some of those roles have ended, my foundational rock and where it all started was our Student Government Association, which is why I'm here today. Um, I jumped in my freshman year as a College of Education Senator, so I represented the College of Education um, and my peers and what they needed and uh, what we could do for them. And jumping all the way up until this past year, I was the Executive Treasurer, where I worked with countless uh, student organizations and clubs to ensure they had adequate materials to put on campus events and student events. Keep in mind, we have over 200 clubs and organizations here on our campus, so the demand was high. While being on SGA, I was also appointed to many and numerous university committees, whether that was faculty-based, academically-based, or student life-based, I was there. And through SGA, I had the opportunity to attend um, or go to our state capitol this past fall and attend the Tennessee Intercollegiate State Legislature, um, where I got to witness and work with many different students across our state, come up with ideas that would better the life for not just college students in Tennessee, but for all residents of Tennessee. So, sorry, I got to turn my page. <laughs> 
Um, and most recently, I visited Tennessee's uh, Secretary of State, Trey Hargett, for a luncheon to discuss voter registration here on our campus and what materials that I can uh, bring here to use for our students. Because at Tech, we don't want just our students to leave being academic scholars, but also being well-rounded and prepared citizens of our state and country. And now while I thought I was doing pretty okay with being an involved student and advocating for my peers and, um, you know, kind of getting an understanding of the university and how it functions and all the little details, I knew I needed to do more and I wanted to do more and that's why I'm before you today. I believe our diverse students, and I say diverse not just meaning race and ethnicity, but I mean diverse in their race, ethnicity, religion, sexuality, gender, socioeconomic statuses, interests, beliefs, and ideas. I believe those students need to be heard, want to be heard, and deserve to be heard. They are more excited and more eager than ever to leave a lasting impact on higher education, especially here at Tennessee Tech. And I would have an honor in being able to cultivate those ideas, bring their comments, questions, and concerns to a new table, your all's table and our table, as this new student trustee. I am incredibly grateful for the opportunities that this university has given me, and I hope that I can pour right back into it by serving as this new student trustee. Thank you all for your time, and I would very much consider, I would very much appreciate your consideration for this position. Thank you, Savannah, that was very impressive. I would entertain a motion with respect to appointing Savannah, uh, Savannah Griffin to the student trustee position on the board of trustees. I would like to make that motion from Tom Jones. That was an outstanding speech, well done. Thank you. Uh, and and if, I would, if I could, I'd like second that motion and just, and, and everything Tom said, really amazing speech. Terrific, thank you, Mr. Lowry. Is there any further discussion or do you all have questions for Savannah that you would like to ask? I just had one question. When is she running for office and what office? <laughs> My question is, will she have time for the Board of Trustees? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> She's going to drop everything else and just do this, I think. My planner is like my best friend, so I'll be sure to sketch it in. I, I think I said this when Tom Jones was coming out as chairman. I said, you know, the old story is give, you want something done right, you give it to someone who's busy. And that sounds like what we've got here as well. So that's terrific. Are there other questions or comments? And just to remind everyone, this will take effect July 1st if we vote to, uh, to affirm Savannah. We're not, we're not going to let Hannah get away one minute early. All right. Is there any other discussion? All right. Then I'm going to ask for a roll call vote. Trustee Alcott. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Seitz. Aye. Trustee Van Hooser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion carries. And that was unanimous. So Savannah, welcome to the Board of Trustees. Thank you. And Savannah, I think we have a seat for you. I think we have a seat for you. Miss Becky's going to take care of it. I believe we, this was very clever. We did this, uh, here we are, surprise. Savannah is our, is our trust, student trustee to be. So thank you and we appreciate you and we're looking forward to spending a year. Uh, someone asked me today if, if it didn't seem like these trustees have to turn over very often and I said they do, only one year term. So that's a very short time for us to get to know you but we look forward to it. Thank you for your willingness to do this. All right, the consent agenda is our next item of business. And just to remind everyone what we have proposed for the consent agenda, let me start by telling you that the following items have been placed on the consent agenda in each case by the appropriate committee. If there's no objection to these items being on the consent agenda, we will vote on these as a group. If there's an objection to any item being included on the consent agenda, I will consider that objection and consider whether to place it on the regular agenda. So is there any, cons any objection to the following items being on the consent agenda? The new academic program proposal for a BS in studio arts, the emeritus president contract, 
TTU Policy 270 for general graduate admission requirements, TTU Policy 506 for general and group travel policies, and tenure recommendations. Is there any, any discussion or anyone who objects to any of those items? If not, I'd entertain a motion to, play, to approve all five of those proposals that came to us from committees this morning. Madam so Chair, I so move. Thank you, Ms. Rose, and was there a second? I'm sorry. I'll second. Thank that. you, Mr. Jones. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. This is a vote on the consent agenda. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Seitz. Aye. Trustee Van Hooser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. All right, the next item on our agenda is from the executive committee and I chair that committee, so I'll be making this recommendation. We met this morning and discussed a new contract for President Phil Oldham. It would be a contract that would extend his term with us for an additional, well, it will extend his term from now for six years. That gives us five extra years beyond where we are today. So we have approximately one year left on his existing contract. This would put him uh, in a contract with us through June of 2028. And then there's actually a provision, if we both elect to continue the contract beyond that, we can, or we can do something different at that point. But this would give us uh, six years from today or five years additional from our existing contract. We had extensive conversation about this this, about this, this morning, um, but I would entertain, I'd like to entertain a motion before we have additional conversation if we're going to. I'd like to entertain a motion to, uh, to, uh, with respect to this contract. So moved. Second. I'm, I'm sorry, is your motion to approve the contract yes. as it's written? Yes. As, uh, thank you. So, because I didn't say specifically. So, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lynn, for moving to approve the contract as written and seconded by Mr. Stites. Now, is there discussion about the contract? Just one question of clarification. His existing contract goes another year, and I think you addressed this this morning. This contract, if approved, would be immediately replacing the previous contract and go into effect now? That's correct. And let me just check with Troy. It's effective as of the day we sign it, right? Yes, that's correct. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Van Hooser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And I'll just say, President Oldham, congratulations on 10 years here. And we look forward to six more with a whole lot more work to be done. Well, thank you, uh, Chairman. I uh, appreciate, appreciate the uh, confidence that the board has in me and this institution. And I look forward to the work we can get done in the next six years. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm glad y'all are part of it. I think you know, we've just made- Just one comment to follow on that. It's, I thought a lot about this contract and it's, uh, it's a big step, and, and I just wanted to say this is not something that I would have been enter, entered into or, or proposed, you know, six or eight or ten years ago. This is something that is, uh, I think, is appropriate to do at this point in this president's career and tenure at, at the university, and I think, I think it's the right time. So anyway, I, just another comment in support of it and also in support of uh, Dr. Oldham. He's done an outstanding job. Thanks. Excellent comment. Thank you, Tom. Any other comments? Well, we look forward to six more years and again, a lot more work. Um, I will ask Mr. I, I have the Audit and Business Committee report is next. So Mr. Stites, if you will um, give your report, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first item on, that I just 
committee approved was the uh, fiscal year 2021 and 22 estimated and the fiscal year 2022 and 23 proposed budget and our committee recommended and I move that the board approve those two budgets. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Van Hooser. Is there a discussion about those about the estimated 21-22 and proposed 22-23 budgets? Hearing none, I'll take a we'll take a roll call vote. Professor Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Van Heeser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. So those budgets are approved. Dr. Stinson, we thank you for your work on that. Uh, Mr. Stites, you want to go forward? The next item to bring, uh, we discussed was the fiscal year 22-23 disclosed projects. And Dr. Stinson, been a good amount of time explaining those projects and what was involved. And upon the committee's recommendation, I moved the board approve the fiscal year 22-23 disclosed projects for the pavement repairs and the new North Hall roof replacement. Uh, just to be clear, I think it's the New Hall North. I just, New Hall North. Yeah. Route. Did I say it differently? I, I think but there were some words reversed in there, but just wanted to be sure we got it right. The New Hall North. New Hall North, North Roof for place. It doesn't roll off the tongue, does <laughs> it? Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Van Hooser. Is there discussion? And we had a lot of discussion about this this morning. Uh, hearing none, I'll ask the Secretary to take a, take a roll call vote, please. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Van Heeser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. So that motion carries and the disclosed projects are approved. And Mr. Stites. The next item we talked about was the capital budget for fiscal year 2023 and 2024. We had, a, again, an dis extensive discussion about the capital budget request. Dr. Stenson took us through that. And upon the committee's recommendation, I move that the board approve the 20, fiscal year 2023-2024 capital budget request. Thank you. Is there, a, is there a second to that motion? Second. I second. I'm sorry, somebody seconded. Second, over here. Oh, thank you, Thomas. I'm sorry. Thank you. And I just realized I probably don't need to be asking for seconds because these are coming from committees, but that's okay. We'll do belt and suspenders today. Sorry. I, I defer to your judgment. I'm, lo I'm losing my Robert's <laughs> Rules of Order mojo, aren't I? All right. So the motion, thank you, Mr. Lynn. The motion's been made and seconded to approve the uh, capital budget request for 23-24, which is, again, one year out. Is there any further discussion on that? I'd like to just quickly add the state's been oh, – doing very well financially and I appreciate them sharing some of that with us it may not always be that way down the road things may change but so far they've been very helpful and I think we need to make sure we appreciate what they've done for us I think that's a great comment do we is there something anything in particular you can think of we ought to do we probably ought to pass this resolution first but or this vote first but do you want to think about it um, yeah, I think any, there's a lot of ways we could do this, and uh, I'm open to any of them. I mean, we, we certainly pass on our thanks to our local legislative delegation routinely, but, uh, but yeah, if the board would like to take up a resolution maybe before the end of this meeting, we'll pass that on to uh, uh, General Assembly and go. Well, or perhaps we could, that might be the way to do it, do it to General Assembly, or we could do it with just a... Uh, thank you, and and you, and ask you to share that with our with our delegation and with whoever you feel like we mm -hmm. should. But I agree with Thomas completely. This has been a 
been a great year, great two or three years for us, hasn't it, with the state? So, all right. Is there other discussion? That was a great comment. Is there other discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Van Heeser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. So thank you. And again, I think you're right, uh, Mr. Lynn. That's a great comment that we've been a beneficiary of a, a lot of goodwill from the state. Uh, Mr. Stites, I believe you have a land acquisition proposal. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, we propose uh, the land acquisition of the Coomer property as identified in the master plan. And upon uh, our committee's recommendation, I moved the board approve the proposed land acquisition for the 520 East 11th Street and 1108 North Washington Avenue. I so move. Thank you. Is there any discussion on that motion, Mr. Wilmore? Yeah, I, I just, I guess I'm a little, not confused, but I'm not clear on where the extra $75,000 is coming from. That's correct. That's the number, right? From 350 was the, the number that we have that we can pay, but the cost is going to be 425. Excuse me. Do you want to address that, President yeah, Oldham, or do you I want to? I think Dr. I can. Stinson? Dr. Stinson can jump in here if she needs to, but I think so. So, uh, uh, one uh, wonderful opportunity that we have working with our university foundation is, is a little bit of agility to uh, broker opportunities like this. Uh, the state restrictions, however, on not being able to pay uh, above uh, appraised value put some limits on what our abilities are, but in this particular case, the foundation was willing to assume the potential liability of that $75,000. And so if if, and this, this would be pending uh, another appraisal, I'm sure, so once another appraisal is done, if it is, uh, if it is insufficient to provide a full uh, reimbursement to the foundation for what they've paid, they're going to assume the loss in that case. So that whether it's $75,000 or some, some amount less than that, uh, whatever that is, the, the foundation will assume it. Does that answer your question? It is. It does. It just seventy-five thousand dollars is a substantial amount of money. So, I just, I guess, want to be clear and, and understand, make sure we're going about this in the proper way, and not, not just spending it frivolously. And I don't think that's what we're doing. I'm not. I'm not insinuating that we are. I just, I just, don't, I just don't completely understand how these processes go forward. So, trying to trying to understand better to make sure that. Yeah. So, in this particular case, it's a. It's basically a. Uh, a partnership with our university foundation to to uh, make the project whole, regardless of what the amount is. But their their liability is is uh, maximized at seventy five thousand dollars, depending on what the appraised value comes in at. I, so, I think, I'm so sorry, they've already interested. purchased the land and will buy from them, or have correct. They, that's what I thought. That's okay. correct. Yes. So they've it's already a done deal from the from the foundation has purchased that those two properties. That's correct. Clary, nod your head. I'm saying this right, aren't so, I? So there'll okay. be a, another appraisal and it may come in at 425. Is that what you're saying? It, yeah, it could. It's okay. possible. All right. One other thing, uh, Phil, you'll remember this. There was a piece of property we wanted right here next to the campus and uh, we couldn't get the appraisal fast enough to respond to the property owner so they sold it to somebody else. And that just happens because when people get ready to sell, they're going to sell to whoever brings the money to the table. The foundation gives us the ability to react more quickly and yet still follow uh, state law. That's, that's, a part of the un that's part of the piece of the puzzle that I did not, was not aware of. So that, that clarifies a lot. Thank you. And as you know, you only get one shot to buy land next to you. I'm glad you asked that question, though, because this is, I think our relationship with the foundation is really critical and really, really advantageous to us. And I've served on the, as has Tom served on the foundation board and Millard served on the foundation board ahead of the trustees board. So we have a little bit more understanding, a tiny bit more than maybe the rest of you do. But I think maybe we make it an information item uh, topic at some point, Lee, if we haven't already 
added that to our list. It seems like something that's really important for us to understand. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't ask the question during the committee meeting. I should have, but this, this no, clarifies good. it for me. This yeah. is that's what this is for, and that, I'm glad you asked it. And again, I I think it's really critical the the Crossville property exercise that we went through. I thought it was a tremendous um, example of how we could work together with the foundation board, and we each had to kind of trust the other one in some ways. And so again, the fact that some of us I still serve on the foundation board. I believe Tom has rolled off, but um, anyway, I think it's important that we sync up. And I'm glad you're asking the questions. I hope you'll keep asking those questions because that's a good one. And Madam Chair, I might also say that it it's probably a uh, good idea for us to have a joint meeting with that foundation, just so people can put names and faces together, and and, and have a greater appreciation for what each group is doing. You you mean not a meeting but a gathering? I think that would be yeah, great. Yeah, yes, a, a gathering. gathering where we... And it might be the same gathering that you are talking about, uh, where we are educated on what they do. Yeah, I think that would be terrific. I, and maybe just have some conversation. That's a that's a really good idea. And maybe have Troy speak to each of us about our respective roles and all of that. That'd be very helpful. We'll add that to our list of a very long list of things we need to know about that we don't yet. But uh, joking aside, I feel like we've made a lot of progress on these. These information sessions, for me at least, have been tremendously helpful. And I feel like they're advancing the ball. And now we're getting newer board members on. And it's just good to go back and even loop back some of those same things again. So thank you, Mr. Stites. I think you have a couple more. Um, Do we vote on that action? Do we vote on the land acquisition? Oh, I'm <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stites. I just wanted to be sure. I want to. I want the minutes to reflect. <laughs> Mr. Stites corrected me on the parliamentary procedure of that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the land acquisition? Barry, you got me so focused on this, I lost track. Sorry. Just one very brief comment that this land acquisition, it's, that's not a new process. I mean, that has happened, I think, many times throughout the history. And, you're right, Tom. And so, it's, but again, it, we're all kind of getting a different understanding of things. So you're right. This is the this is the process we've always used. But it's good that we're doing it. And thank you again, Mr. Stites. Is there any further discussion or questions? Then I will, on behalf of Mr. Stites, ask for a roll call vote, please, since he insists. We're writing on the acquisition of the property at 11th Street in North Washington. Just to clarify. Thank you. We, it's coming out of committee. Yes. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Stites. Aye. Trustee Van Hooser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. And just to be clear, I used my discretion since that was a motion from a committee. I didn't take a second, and I won't on the next one as well. So uh, I think we have two more matters, Mr. Stites. The next item to bring up before the board is the uh, lease for the Craft Center with the Department of, Ar of the Army. Uh, we had a long discussion about the Craft Center. I didn't realize till this morning it was 450 acres, so it's a pretty big swath of land right on Center Hill Lake and we're renting it uh, uh, from the Corps of Engineers and the Department of Army and upon our committee after discussion our committee recommendation is that we uh, approve the proposed lease for the craft center with the Department of the Army and so I move that we do exactly that. Thank you. I don't think I need a second. Is there discussion about this item? This is a spectacular asset to the university, and, and Kim Winkle does a great job running that craft center, and I, I, I personally think it's one of our real assets. Um, is, hearing no discussion, we'll take Trudy, a roll call vote. Oh, Trudy, sorry. I'm sorry. I was yes, just, Thomas? Uh, we, we have a source of income for this lease. Do we need to say something about that? Well, the, the uh, I think your question the, the lease itself is no cost but we are obligated to keep the property up and maintain it 
uh, we, we get an annual recurring appropriation from the state of Tennessee to do largely that, and we've also received in, in this coming fiscal year uh, a fairly sizable uh, uh, one-time uh, amount of funding for capital improvements on site. So yes, we, we've, we have the funding to satisfy any requirements of the lease. Is, is that answer? I hope yes, that answers your question. I just I wasn't sure how clear that was. We, I mean, there is some cost, obviously, to maintain it, but the lease itself is looked like it's covered. Just just a quick question, out of almost out of ignorance on this. I mean, I think it's a great asset to the university, but is there ever possibility or concern of losing it, or a, you know, another Army Corps of Engineers deciding to lease it to somebody else for a better profit? Well, uh, it's a good question, uh, Trustee Jones. I, you know, the, I think that the 25-year lease contract gives us a lot of security uh, in whatever investments we're willing to make on site, uh, knowing that it will be maintained. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think there's any real threat uh, that it could uh, go somewhere else. I think we've we've demonstrated really good stewardship of the property and and utilization. Uh, based on what their interests are uh, to use the the uh, the land uh, for its stated purpose, so I think we're in really good shape in that regard. I think there's, uh, and we we have a lot of conversations about this internally. There, there's a lot of additional potential uh, for us to maximize the utilization of that site uh, in future years, and we we'd like to explore those. Uh, that those are some areas where partnerships would be very useful and important so uh, you know that's something the, the the board may want to uh, help us sort of sort through at some point in time as well chair harper i have an additional comment yes professor alcott um adding on to what tom said i know that slightly before i was uh hired at the university which was 20 years ago there was a danger of the state cutting those funds for the maintenance that we received. So I know that there has been a time when our partnership with the craft center was in danger or with that parts of it were possibly on the chopping block. So I'm glad to hear that that is not the case anytime since then. I just have to report that several years ago, I bought a yearbook kind of as a joke because it was in an antique store here in Cookville and it was from the years I was here. So just FYI, but I was thumbing through a yearbook and I realized that the artist in residence, it would have been the summer of maybe 81 or so, the artist in residence there was Dale Chihuly. Chihuly, who did all the glass at the Venetian in, in Las Vegas and all of that. He was the artist in residence in the, at the Appalachian Craft Center in Center Hill Lake for a summer in the early 80s. So very cool. Um, I think we still need to take a vote on this one. Is that correct? Is there any further discussion on the Craft Center lease? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Seitz. Aye. Trustee Van Heuser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. And Mr. Seitz, I believe there's one more order of business. Madam Chair, the final uh, item on our agenda for the board is the change of the dual enrollment tuition rate due to changes in the Student Assistant Corporation dual enrollment grant. And I'm glad I don't have to say that very fast. Um, upon my committee's recommendation, I moved the board approve the dual enrollment tuition rate of $179.55 per credit hour. I so move. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this? We actually talked about this one some at our meeting this morning as well. Any further discussion on this one? Hearing no discussion, we'll take a roll call vote. Trustee Alcott. Aye. Trustee Jones. Aye. Trustee Lowry. Aye. Trustee Lynn. Aye. Trustee Rose. Aye. Trustee Seitz. Aye. Trustee Van Hooser. Aye. Trustee Wilmore. Aye. 
Trustee Harper. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Madam I Chairman, if, if I could well, interject please. real quick, I just got a, I got a text from uh, Dr. Braswell. He reminded me that uh, the state funding that we've received uh, to help with the craft center that we were just under discussion actually helped us get uh, a $1 million private uh, donation from uh, the Wingate Foundation in that regard. So just to show you how, how these funds can be leveraged in a lot of cases. So it's, it's a good news story. Terrific. That is good news. Okay, I need to remind everyone that we have upcoming board meetings on October the 6th and on December the 1st. And so I hope to see all of you here for those and hopefully more of you can be here in person. Uh, and then I mentioned this this morning, but we have a, an informational session planned for August the 23rd. And that topic will be athletics. And I know that many of you are very interested in that. And uh, I, I, the reason I say many of you is both Mark Wilson and President Olin both know athletics isn't exactly my strong suit, but I'm delighted for the, for the, for the opportunity to learn more about it. So I'll be looking forward to that. And then I have a, uh, I have another bitter, well, this one's mostly bitter. There's not much sweet, I guess, about this last item. I want to, uh, I want to acknowledge our friend Hannah Willis. And I've asked President Oldham to escort Hannah up here. I'm going to sit so that I can, so I can say this, uh, with a microphone, and then I will stand and present Hannah with a plaque. But I'm going to let her get in position first. Trustee Willis, I know that I speak on behalf of the full board of trustees when I say thank you for your service and commitment to Tennessee Tech. In particular, your service to the board of trustees has been exemplary and we couldn't have asked for a more dedicated or professional trustee to represent our students. I know that I found myself forgetting that you were the designated student trustee rather than one appointed by the governor. You have brought grace and professionalism to the role of the student trustee, and I think that your successors will have big shoes to fill. I think that each of us would agree that no one has worked harder or been better prepared for our meetings and our deliberations than you. When you were being considered for this position, you asserted that you would represent several underrepresented areas of our student body, including non-traditional students and students with disabilities. I hope that the students that you have represented are as proud as I am that you were their representative. I thought this morning as you were challenging the enrollment numbers about uh, the student, the very students I just mentioned, the underrepresented students, that you're still doing exactly what you promised to do. I have been so proud to call you Trustee Willis, and now I look forward to continuing to call you my friend. Best wishes to you, Trustee Willis, and I have a plaque for you. Savannah, you do have big shoes to fill, but I know you will based on your presentation today. But Hannah, I hope you will continue to stay involved with us. And Hannah gave me a, one of her board business cards this, after, this afternoon to share with a friend of mine who's visually impaired and is a young woman who's starting out and wanting to know about how Hannah has negotiated college. And so I think that's really great. All right, do we have other business to come before this board? 
Chair Harper. Can I, this yes, is Teresa, Harper. thank you. Yeah, just a reminder to go to go look at the schedule on the president's evaluation and when that you are going to be expected to complete the questionnaires so that when they do come to you, you block out some time to do that so that we can make sure everybody uh, gets to submit their evaluation. Yes, I have been in Teresa's shoes, and I will tell you there is nothing more frustrating than not hearing, and we don't know which ones of you are, because this is, this is anonymous, so we don't know who is, who is submitting and who is not. So please, 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 I know I'm not even going to ask please, just do it. Just, there is no try, right, Barry, isn't that it? Just do it. So anyway, all right. Thank you, Teresa. That's a great reminder. And, and the same to the cabinet. The, we really need your input. It is critical to getting a good review, a, 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 a thorough review of the president. All right. Is there any other business? Yes, Mr. Lynn. Um, if we do a resolution, Redonna, Trustee Rose and I were thinking about it would be possible for many of us to sign it on the board. If it's practical, that we would appreciate the opportunity. You mean for this for our state legislators? Right. So I think I, I had kind of abandoned the idea of a resolution only because I thought we couldn't get it done today. But if we can, I don't know, is that possible to do a resolution today or can we? I wonder if we could sign a blank sheet of paper and then perhaps I attach that to the resolution. How does that all work? Uh, certainly we can do something. Um, let me get Lee maybe to help out here a little bit. I, I mean, what we could do, we could draft something and uh, circulate it for uh, approval, couldn't we? Yeah, I think probably we will draft something and we could send it around via email and just ask for your approval that way. Uh, and then let us work on how the best way to get the signatures is. Because okay. I'm not sure. We could put it on a piece of paper today, but it might not be. Yeah, we could send you an electronic way to oh, sign it. So right. we'll work on that and get that done. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Yes, thank you, Mr. Lynn. I'm sorry. I, I had said, well, maybe we could just ask the president to handle it, and so I, ad I abandoned the idea of a resolution, but I think it's a good idea, and I, I'd like to do that, so thank you. So we'll, we can vote by email then, Lee. Is that right? We'll find out whether we can. For, for something like this, which is an informal matter, I think that's certainly okay. Okay, great. Thank you. You, could you not just vote on approving a resolution in support of the General Assembly uh, subject to drafting from the chair? Certainly, Madam Chair, if you'd like to entertain that motion. So is that, was that a motion, Tom? Yes. Is there a second to that second. motion? I'll Thank second. you, Mr. Lynn. Is there further discussion? All in favor? No, I need to have a roll call vote. Because people are like trying. Because people Trustee trying. Alcott has left us already. Trustee, I'm just going to go as I look around the room. Trustee Lowry? Aye. Trustee Jones? Aye. Trustee Lynn? Aye. Trustee Rose? Aye. Trustee Stites? Trustee Harper? Trustee Van Hooser? Aye. Trustee Wilmore? Aye. And I know we have the support of Trustee Willis and Trustee Griffin. So, all right, motion passes. All right, thank you. That was excellent, and thank you, Tom, for suggesting that. All right, is there any other business to come before the board today? Well, I thank all of you for your hard work and for your efforts, and I thank those of you who attended today in person and those of you who joined us remotely. I appreciate that as well, and I will look forward to seeing you all. I, well, we do virtual, I guess, on August the 23rd, and then I will see you all again on... I'm sorry, October the 6th. All right, thanks everybody. See you next time. Hannah, don't go away very far. Thank you, Trustee Lowry and Trustee Jones.